Okay, so now we're going to get into the new stuff with trigonometry. And we're going to start with the cosine rule for the sides of a triangle. Now, these rules we can start to apply to angles, or sorry, to triangles that do not have a right angle. So that's the exciting part. We can take any old triangle with no right angle, or with a right angle, and actually apply it. Um, if you want to see a proof of where this comes from, if you're interested in some of the more background information of how the formula actually works out, if you look in your workbook on page 20, you'll see that information there. So, what I want to look at is, first off, being able to label what we call the vertices. And the vertices are really just the corners or the angles. So, these are the angles, and we always want to label them with capital letters. So, in big letters, angles. And here we see, it doesn't come up very good in my version, but A, B, and C in big capital letters. Now the side opposite of each vertex, or opposite of each angle, has the corresponding letter but in lowercase. So for instance, if I go across from A, I will see that I have a little a. And what I'm actually going to do is start putting in some colors here. So if I go A, I go across to side, what we will call A. And same for B and C. So across from C, I will find a little side called C. If this is C, across from it will be the side C. And for B, I'm going to look across from it, and I will find the side with the lowercase b. And again, that's because it's across from the angle B. Now it'll be really important to be able to label out your triangles because as soon as you've got everything labeled you can actually go about solving the problem. There's not really a hard fast rule about what you call A or what you call B or what you call C, but to give you a huge advantage I will give you a hint. Always label the unknown in your problem A or little a, depending on what you're looking for, whether it's the unknown angle or an unknown side. So again, always label the unknown a, and then the b and c can just follow after that. You can go on a clockwise pattern, doesn't really matter. But again, just to remind you, the pattern here is that angle a will be opposite from side a. So this is a formula that will actually be given to you, and so don't freak out about memorizing it. It will be given to you, but you will have to understand how to use it and what it means. Now a few things to notice here, if you're not as strong on your algebra as some might be, you'll want to remember that there are in little invisible time signs between each of these. So that's 2 times b times c times cosine of a. Um, and let's give a go at this. So what we need to do, like many of our problems, is actually identify what we know and what we don't know and then from there plug it into the formula. So our first step here will actually be to look at what we don't know, and in this case it's actually already labeled as A, which is quite convenient. So here we have our unknown, so that can be our first step. One label unknown A or A, depending on if it's an angle or a side, then label all of the other sides. With B and C. Our third step will be to actually plug it into the rules. So let's go ahead and label everything else. If this is little a, remember what we've decided is that the angle across from little a should be big A, that that's going to be angle A. And B and C don't really matter to us in terms of what we label what, so let's just go around from A um, I can call this one little b, and I'll call this one little c. So I know that I have angle b on this side, and angle c on the other side, because it's opposite of the side c. So here we see a's are across from each other, c's are across from each other, and b's are across from each other. So that's our labeling, and now we'll actually plug it in to, plug in to the rule. So our rule 
a squared plus b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times cosine of a. So what do we have? We don't know what a is, so we're going to leave it as a squared is equal to b squared is 7 squared, c squared is going to be 6 squared, minus 2 times 7 times 6 times cosine of the angle A, which was 120. So if we plug all of that carefully into our calculator, we're going to get A squared is equal to 127. And to find out what A is, the way you undo a squared for A squared is to take the square root. So A is going to be equal to the square root of 127. And this is equal to 11.3 centimeters. So to solve for A, and we can put that as a little note here, to solve for a, sorry, that should be a little a, little a, take the square root. So in a sense, we could say a is equal to the square root of b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, with brackets. So it doesn't matter if you do that all in one step, or if you do it like we did here, just plug everything in, get to a squared, and then take your square root. Both ways will be just fine. Okay. Um, so we'll add that here as step number four, actually. Keep with the blue. Step number four, take square root to get a. Okay. So that's the first example of it. Let's take a look at one more example. Um, if you want to, you could pause here and try it on your own and see how you go and then watch the rest of the video and check. But if you're not sure, um, we'll go through it together. So thinking about the steps that we know, the first thing we need to do is label the unknown as a little a or a big A, depending on what it is. So if I look at this problem, I've been given a bunch of information. I've got an angle, two sides, and one side that I don't know. This is my unknown. So because of the side I don't know, I'm going to label it with a little a. Again, I'll always label the unknown with the a. Next thing I want to do is label my angles and my sides. So if I remember, I can just go clockwise from the unknown, a, b, c, to label my sides. And now to label the angles, I need to think about what's opposite. So a is opposite of 39, so that's my big A. And B is opposite of this angle up here, and C is the opposite of that one. Now B and C, we actually don't really need to label for the angles here, because there's no information there, and we're not really looking for them. But just as a habit to know what everything actually is, we can go ahead and label them. So the next step will be to plug into the formula. So again, it's A squared is equal to B, which is 20 squared, plus C squared, which is 15 squared minus 2 times 20 times 15 times cosine of the angle 39. Plugging that all carefully into the calculator, you'll get a squared is equal to 158.7. And as our last step, don't forget it, we need to find out what a is, which is actually taking the square root. 158.7 is going to equal 12.6 meters. So A, the length of side A, is equal to 12.6 meters. And you can always stop and check, does this make sense? If you pay attention, you'll notice that 15, 20 meters, and 12.6 meters are all kind of similar, so it seems like it could be about right. So from here, time to do some practice. Head to your workbook. You're going to be looking at page 21, and it's questions 92 to 98.